Hello and welcome to the devlog of Rocket Explorer, no longer Rockets VR version 0.4. There's not a lot to talk about in this update, but it's definitely exciting. So let's get into it. Most of the development time this month has gone to making Rockets, I was just about to say Rockets VR, making Rocket Explorer available for PC platforms, so Windows, Mac and Linux, as well as the VR. So that's why it's called Rocket Explorer, and then there's also Rocket Explorer VR. And there's a big reason for that, because not a lot of people own one of these. They can be a bit expensive, I got mine for cheap because I bought it used, but not a lot of people own them. And so that's why I made Rocket Explorer available for non-VR platforms. And I think it's really exciting, because now it's basically available to everyone. There were some difficulties, so let's talk about that. I had the entire menu in 3D, so you could view it in the in the headset in the 3D world. You don't want that when you are on a desktop. You want to have a menu that opens on the screen, not where you have to click stuff in the world. So I had to rework the entire menu, but still have it do all the same things as the 3D one. But not only that, I also had to get it out of the way, because in the 3D world, I could have it down at the bottom, where you can just look up and see the rocket. But here, I want you to be able to look at the rocket at the same time as you open the menu and do the changes and stuff like that. So you don't have to look down and look up. So that's why it's quite different than the VR menu. It's off to the side and stuff is more vertical. The non-VR player controller itself was quite easy because I've done that a lot of time before and it wasn't a difficult task to just make a non-VR controller. Where you can move around with the WASD keys and look around with the mouse. What has become more difficult though is managing two scenes. So now I have a VR scene and a non-VR scene and they have to be exactly the same except the controllers and the menus. So I have to manage right now that the same rockets and the same models and stuff like that is all the same. And it's actually quite annoying because Unity does allow for multiple scenes to be open at the same time, which would mean that I could have a scene just for the 3D elements and then I could have a scene for the VR controller and that menu and a scene for the non-VR controller and that menu and then I could just load in whatever one I want. Problem is, you can't have cross references between scenes in Unity at the moment. Right now I want the player controller to be able to talk to the rockets and stuff like that. So when I do stuff in the menu, it changes stuff with the rockets. But you can't do that at the moment because you can't talk between scenes. So that's why I have to have it all in one scene and thus I have to have two scenes for VR and non-VR. So that's a little annoying, but that's how it is right now. So that's basically it for this update. There's also a new rocket, the Atlas V 551, which is the biggest and baddest variant of that rocket. And that's really cool to have in because it's an important rocket and it's cool. So let's talk about what I want to do for this next update, because there's still some very important features that are missing that I really want to be in there. Rockets have different configurations. So I just talked about the Atlas V 551. That's one configuration, but there's also the Atlas V 421. So a four meter fairing and two solid rocket boosters and the one uh, single engine upper stage. So yeah, there's different configurations, but it's not necessarily a different rocket. And instead of having just different rockets for, for all these configurations, I want a system to be able to to view the different configurations. So that's what I'm gonna develop. I want you to be able to click some buttons and then you, you can change the fairing or maybe it's a rocket that has a fairing or it can have a capsule. And that's gonna change some stuff about the rocket, but it's not a different rocket per se. That's definitely the most important one right now. There are also some minor things I want to do like I want to expand the environment a little bit, so I have a better launch tower, some water deluge systems, and stuff like that that doesn't interfere with the rockets but add to the immersion. I also want another scene where you can 
view the rockets laying down. Sort of like in the Kennedy Space Center uh, visitor complex, where you can view the, the Saturn V rocket laying down and split into the different stages, sections of the rocket. I think that is a really cool way to view the rocket because it's sort of lower to the ground and it's easier to see the scale. But that's later down the line. As I said, for now I'm gonna do the configuration thing and I think that's an, an important one. If you have any ideas that you think are important or are missing, please let me know in the comments. If you don't want to commit to anything and just want to try the demo, I have a link to that down in the description below. But if you want to try the full version as it is right now, you can support me on Patreon to get access to that. Every month I strive to publish a new version of this so you can get continuous updates and get the newest cool stuff in this rocket experience thing that I'm making. I think it's really cool. I hope you think it's really cool. Thank you so much for watching this development vlog. Subscribe to get more of these and trailers, but I'm also doing some, some visualizations of other stuff. You may have seen my Starship prototype animation where it flies a little bit, or maybe you've seen my Dragon XL animation, and that's just some of the other stuff I do. Obviously, this is my main priority. I like also doing other stuff, so check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.